BBC Two is the second television channel operated by the British Broadcasting Corporation in the United Kingdom, Isle of Man and Channel Islands. It covers a wide range of subject matter, but tending towards more highbrow programs than the more mainstream and popular BBC One. Like the BBC's other domestic TV and radio channels, it is funded by the television license, and is therefore commercial-free. It is a comparatively well-funded public service network, regularly attaining a much higher audience share than most public service networks worldwide. Originally styled BBC Two, it was the third British television station to be launched, and from 1 July 1967, Europe's first television channel to broadcast regularly in colour. It was envisaged as a home for less mainstream and more ambitious programming, and while this tendency has continued to date, most special interest programs of a kind previously broadcast on BBC Two, for example the BBC Proms, now tend to appear on BBC Four instead. A high-definition version of the channel launched on 26 March 2013, replacing BBC HD. History Launch British television at the time of BBC Two's launch consisted of two channels the BBC Television Service and the ITV network made up of smaller regional companies. Both channels had existed in a state of competition since ITV's launch in 1955, and both had aimed for a populist approach in response. The 1962 Pilkington Report on the Future of Broadcasting noticed this, and that ITV lacked any serious programming. It therefore decided that Britain's third television station should be awarded to the BBC. Prior to its launch, the new BBC Two was promoted on the BBC television service, the soon-to-be renamed BBC One. The animated adverts featured the campaign mascots, Hullabaloo, a mother kangaroo, and Custard, her joey. Prior to, and several years after, the channel's formal launch, the channel broadcast trade test transmissions, short films made externally by companies such as Shell and BP, which served to enable engineers to test reception, but became cult viewing. The channel was scheduled to begin at 19.20 on 20 April 1964 and show an evening of light entertainment, starting with the comedy show The Alberts a performance from Soviet comedian Arkady Rakin, and a production of Cole Porter's Kiss Me, Kate, culminating with a fireworks display. However, at around 1845 a huge power failure, originating from a fire at Battersea Power Station, caused Television Centre, and indeed much of West London, to lose all power. BBC One was able to continue broadcasting via its facilities at Alexandra Palace. But all attempts to show the scheduled programmes on the new channel failed. Associated Rediffusion, the London weekday ITV franchise holder, offered to transmit on the BBC's behalf, but their gesture was rejected. At 2200 programming was officially postponed until the following morning. As the BBC's news centre at Alexandra Palace was unaffected, they did in fact broadcast brief bulletins on BBC Two that evening, beginning with an announcement by the newsreader Gerald Priestland at around 1925. There was believed to be no recording made of this bulletin, but a videotape was discovered in early 2003. By 1100 on 21 April, power had been restored to the studios and programming began, thus making Play School the first program to be shown officially on the channel. The launch schedule, postponed from the night before, was then successfully shown that evening, albeit with minor changes. In reference to the power cut, the transmission opened with a shot of a lit candle which was then sarcastically blown out by presenter Dennis Toohey. To establish the new channel's identity and draw viewers to it, the BBC decided that a widely promoted, lavish series would be essential in its earliest days. The production chosen was the Foresight Saga, a no-expense-spared adaptation of the novels by John Galsworthy. 
featuring well-established actors Kenneth Moore and Eric Porter. Critically for the future of the fledgling channel, the BBC's gamble was hugely successful, with an average of 6 million viewers tuning in per episode, a feat made more prominent by the fact that only 9 million were able to receive the channel at the time. This created a market for dual-standard receivers which could switch between the two systems. The early technical problems which included being unable to transmit U.S. recorded videotapes due to a lack of system conversion from the U.S. NTSC system, were resolved by a committee headed by James Redmond. Technological advancements The new 625-line system had one noticeable advantage. The bandwidth was sufficient for color broadcasts and indeed on 1 July 1967, during the Wimbledon Championships. BBC Two became the first channel in Europe to begin regular broadcasts in color, using the PAL system. The 13-part series Civilization was created as a celebration of two millennia of Western art and culture to showpiece the new color technology. BBC One and ITV later joined BBC Two on 625 line the UHF band, but continued to simulcast on 405 line VHF until 1985. BBC One and ITV simultaneously introduced PAL Colour on UHF on 15 November 1969. Although they both had broadcasts and programs in color, unofficially, since at least late 1968. In 1979, the station adopted the first computer-generated channel identification in Britain, with its use of the double-striped Orange 2 logo. The ident, created in-house by BBC engineers, lasted until March 1986 and heralded the start of computer-generated logos. As the switch to digital-only terrestrial transmission progressed, BBC Two was the first analog TV channel to be replaced with the BBC Multiplex, at first four, then two weeks ahead of the other four channels. This was required for those relay transmitters that had no current freeview service giving viewers time to purchase the equipment, unless they had already selected a satellite or cable service. The last region for BBC Two to end on analog terrestrial television was Northern Ireland on 10 October 2012. It was announced on 19 February 2013 that a HD simulcast of BBC Two would commence on 26 March 2013 at 6 a.m. This is the single UK service without national variations. At the 2012 Guardian Edinburgh International Television Festival, BBC Two was named Terrestrial Channel of the Year. Operation. The channel controllers have been 1964-1965, Michael Peacock, 1965-1969, David Attenborough, 1969-1974, Robin Scott, 1974-1978, Aubrey Singer, 1978-1982, Brian Wenham, 1982-1987, Graham MacDonald, 1987-1992, Alan Yentib, 1992-1996, Michael Jackson, 1996-1999, Mark Thompson, 1999-2004, Jane Root, 2004-2008, Roly Keating, 2008-2014, Janice Hadlow, 2014-present, Kim Schillinglaw, Adam Barker served as acting controller of the channel, after Janice Hadlow left the channel in March 2014 and until Kim Schillinglaw began as new permanent occupant of the post. Since 2013, the controller of BBC Two has been given the expanded title controller of BBC Two and BBC Four, with ultimate oversight of the BBC Four service added to their duties. The channel forms part of the BBC Television Executive Group and is answerable to the head of that department and to the BBC Trust. Programming BBC Two's remit is to be a mixed-genre channel appealing to a broad adult audience with programmes of depth and substance.
It should carry the greatest amount and range of knowledge-building programming of any BBC television channel, complemented by distinctive comedy, drama and arts programming. BBC Two Remit BBC Two's Remit to Historically was one screening programmes targeting the arts, culture, some comedy and drama, and appealing to audiences not already served by BBC One or ITV. Over its first 30 or so years the channel developed a reputation for screening highly praised and prestigious drama series. Among these boys from the Black Stuff or 1996's, critically acclaimed Our Friends in the North, the channel's highbrow profile is also in part attributable to a long history of demanding documentaries of all types, beginning with Civilization and the Ascent of Man in the 1960s. Like the early Channel 4, BBC Two also established for itself a reputation as a champion of independent and international cinema. Under the Screen 2 brand, the channel has sometimes been judged, increasingly in more recent years, to have moved away from this original role and to have moved closer to the mainstream. Since the launch of the digital-only BBC Four, the BBC has been accused in particular of shifting its more highbrow output to the new channel, which, until the end of the UK's digital TV switchover in October 2012, a minority of viewers did not receive. BBC Four's remit is very similar to that of the earlier remit of BBC Two, and contains many documentaries and arts programming. It has been perceived by some that this strategy is to allow BBC Two to show more popular programmes and to secure higher ratings. Since 2004 there have been some signs of an attempt to return closer to parts of BBC Two's earlier output with the arts strand The Culture Show. Its most popular programme at the moment is Top Gear. Much of BBC Two's output have previously, or subsequently been shown on other channels. Some of these programmes are repeats of popular or flagship programmes from BBC Four in a late-night strand, originally called BBC Four on Two but now unbranded, for the benefit of audiences without access to BBC Four. Other programmes are moved to the channel as a result of their success on BBC Three or Four, so that subsequent series are well received. An example of this is the BBC Three series Torchwood that was transferred to the channel following the success of the first series. BBC Two is also used as a testing ground for programmes prior to their moving to the flagship BBC One. Such examples include Have I Got News For You and popular comedy Miranda, which moved to BBC One after success on Two. Also in August 2014 The Great British Bake Off moved to BBC One due to its success the previous year on BBC Two. Another founding part of BBC Two was to provide educational and community programming on the BBC, as part of its public service remit. The educational section of this commitment saw BBC Two broadcast a large amount of programming for the Open University, who co-produced programming with the corporation, and saw the channel broadcast BBC Schools programmes from 1983 until the programmes were transferred to the BBC Learning Zone in 2010. As a result of the channel's commitment to community broadcasting, the channel produced the symbolic Open Space series. A strand developed in the early 1970s in which members of the public would be allotted half an hour of television time, and given a level of editorial and technical training in order to produce for themselves a film on an issue most important to them. The Community Programs Unit was disbanded in 2004. BBC Two originally showed children's programming in the morning, with two different blocks, CBBC and CBBs. First at 6 a.m. until 7 a.m. the CBBS block was shown, then at 7 a.m. until 8.30 a.m. CBBC was shown, then at 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. it was followed by BBC World News, with daily politics on Wednesday. The CBBS block was then shown again, on BBC Two Scotland between 8.30 and 9 a.m. they would show Gaelic children's programmes under the name CBBS Alba. Then at 9am they would hand over to CBBS, 
On Saturdays, the CBBC block was shown from 7 a.m. until 12 p.m. On Sundays, the CBBC block was shown from 7 a.m. until 10 a.m. But in 2013 this was removed as the digital switchover meant that the dedicated CBBC and CBB's channel were widely available, and replaced by repeats and the sign zone. At the same time a new hour-long news program was created at 11 a.m. called 11 o'clock news hour which is made up of half an hour of BBC News and half BBC World News. Other news channel programs such as Hard Talk and Click were added to fill the 10.30 slot. From 2014 the first UK airing of BBC World News as the travel show fills the Friday morning slot. On weekday holidays and weekends at 11.30 a.m. feature films are shown instead of programs such as Ready Steady Cook, The Pink Panther Show, Meerkat Manor or BBC World News. Mainly the films are black and white. On occasional Friday nights when charity telethons, such as Sports Relief or Comic Relief, are shown, a 40-minute section is shown at 10 p.m. while the BBC News at 10 is being broadcast on BBC One, and the National Lottery is shown around 11.30 p.m. Some BBC Two programming was simulcast or repeated in high definition on separate channel BBC HD until 6 a.m. on the 26th of March 2013, when the BBC HD channel ceased operation, being instead replaced by BBC Two HD and simulcast with its SD variant. Since January 2013. BBC Two stopped showing children's programmes and replaced the weekday morning schedule with repeats of the previous BBC One morning schedule such as Homes Under the Hammer, Don't Get Done, Get Dom, Street Patrol UK, Caught Red-Handed, Cowboy Trap, Rip Off Britain and other consumer programmes shown between 6.05am and 8.20am. Then between 8.20 a.m. and 10.35 a.m. they show sign zone with programming with sign language on. On weekend mornings they show our old black and white movies followed by a double bill of nature programming of David Attenborough, and occasionally an omnibus of programs that have been during the week including Great Railway Journeys. They also started showing Sign Zone in the early hours after 12.20 a.m., which BBC One used to show before 2013. On weekday afternoons around 2.15 with the old retro logos from 1970s 80s in between the programmes. In October 2014, Russell Howard's Good News and Backchat moved to BBC Two. They were previously shown on BBC Three. In 2014, BBC Two commissioned Britain's first transgender sitcom, called Boy Meets Girl, which follows the developing relationship between Leo, a 26-year-old man and Judy, a 40-year-old transgender woman. From 7 April 2015 the morning sign zone was replaced by Victoria of Derbyshire, presentation, as well as programmes. BBC Two has also proved memorable for its numerous idents, various short films shown in between programme junctions that serve as the channel. Identity Nearly all of the identity packages used since the channel's launch in 1964 have featured a prominent numeral 2 in the design. Notable designs include the electronic double stripe 2, the white 2 ident, and most notably the 1991 2S. The 1991 2S featured a sans serif numeral 2 at the center of an initially art related scene. However, the idents moved away from this style later, on as the station's style changed. Although highly praised, this expansive set of idents was ended in November 2001. The BBC corporate logo was updated within the idents in October 1997. Though the idents moved away from the original Viridian colour scheme in these latter years, the subsequent presentation style was introduced on 19 November 2001 and kept the same figure, too. 
but in a yellow background and given their personality. At the time, BBC Two became the first BBC channel to feature a box logo. In 2007, BBC Two debuted the new theme A Window on the World, with the two numeral providing that view. Introduced on 18 February 2007, the new look also saw the channel adopt a new teal-coloured box logo featuring the BBC logo above the name, too, in the font of In 2014, some of the 1990s idents were reintroduced with a white box at the bottom right of the screen with the 2007 logo, which rotates to reveal the words 50 years to its left. There was also a special anniversary ident with the same 50 years logo variant in the corner. On 1 January 2015, BBC Two permanently reintroduced and modified the selection of the 1990s idents used in 2014, implementing the teal box logo whilst ridding of the 50 years logo. However, BBC Two Northern Ireland have opted for a centralised text-only logo and, unlike the other regional variations of BBC Two, are currently airing nearly 40 idents from the 1991 to 2001 set. Regional variations BBC Two also has regional variations in the nations, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The nation's versions of BBC Two share the same idents, but with the nation name in the BBC Two box. BBC Two Scotland shows a lot of specifically Scottish programming on the channel, as well as its sister channel BBC One Scotland and the schedules are often mixed around to match. BBC Two Northern Ireland and BBC Two Wales both have the option to opt out, however they generally stick to the network schedule, only opting out a couple of times each week. Until December 2008, BBC Wales broadcast a special, digital-only channel, BBC Two W, which contained more opt-outs than analogue-only BBC Two Wales. BBC Scotland occasionally broadcast Gaelic language programmes under the banner BBC Two Alba. In England, many of the English regions were combined to form super regions, such as the entire North or Midlands. These had the option to opt out of the network programming on the analogue feed and replace it with local programming. However, this was usually only done in exceptional circumstances, as all regular regional programming has been transferred to BBC One, and the English regions are not available on digital on BBC Two. There is no specific BBC Two England. This role is fulfilled by the network BBC Two. Availability outside the UK BBC Two is widely available in the Republic of Ireland on cable and MMDS, as well as being received directly in areas bordering Northern Ireland, or in coastal areas from Wales. It is also available on cable and IPTV in the Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland and Liechtenstein. On 27 March 2013, it began being carried by British Forces Broadcasting Service to members of HM Forces and their families around the world, replacing the BFBS2 TV channel, which already carried a selection of BBC2 programmes. It shares a channel with CBBC, which broadcasts from early morning until the early evening. Accessibility The BBC announced in May 2008 that it had achieved its aim for all programming to have subtitles for viewers with hearing difficulties. These are available on the BBC Red button, and until 23 October 2012 via the CFAX Teletext service. The BBC also offers audio description on some popular programmes for visually impaired viewers. The percentage of the BBC's total television output with audio description available is 10%, having been increased from 8% in 2008.